Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Martin Brown. I'm a developer advocate at JetBrains. And thanks for choosing this weird talk, which is going to be about a really unusual use case for Kotlin. Our story starts at KotlinConf uh, two years ago, uh, where the keynote and Hadi and all of this was like super interesting. But, but what I was fixated on was this, which was the animation that was playing between sessions in the keynote room. And this was all of the Kotlin logos through the ages, like bouncing around the screen uh, in the style of old like DVD screensavers. Uh, and I found this fascinating, and I really wanted to have this screensaver myself. And later that year, I joined JetBrains, and I found the person who made this. And I found out that it's actually like a pre-rendered video for that exact format of the big screen. So it's not a screensaver, uh, sadly. So when something doesn't exist, what do you do as a developer? You try to figure out how you can create it for yourself. Uh, and I'm really like not an Apple developer of any sort uh, by like any stretch of the imagination. But I did find that there is a framework for creating screensavers. Uh, for macOS, so I gave that a go. Once you start looking at the details, uh, you might be discouraged. The first thing I spotted here is that you can write screensavers in Objective-C, which is like just about the last thing I want to do. Uh, and then you keep reading, and you just find really strange things. Like you can use functions to produce random values and centering rectangles as like part of the screensaver framework. And the reason why that's strange is because screensavers are just native macOS applications at the end of the day. You can actually create one by just going to Xcode, going to the very, very bottom of the template list, uh, going to other, and then even within that, it's the last entry. But there is a screensaver template. And if you have a look, uh, it does indeed give you a bunch of Objective-C code. But even there, you can see that what you essentially need to do is implement the screensaver view type with your own implementation. Now, I started looking. I saw a lot of uh, responses on the internet which said that you can't build them in Swift. It really has to be Objective-C. But like with everything that you'll ever find about macOS screensaver development online, this was luckily ancient. It was like from six or uh, so years ago. So actually, you can now do this in Swift. Something in the binary, something has stabilized, and it does now work in Swift. So let's take a look at just a very brief overview of what the API looks like. It has an initializer, uh, which is very reasonable. It gives you the frame that you're going to draw in so that you know your sizing information. And it tells you if you're doing a preview or not, uh, so that you know if you're running inside the system settings or actually like full screen as a real screensaver. You can also set things like the frame rate here. Then the API goes like, Yes, we've had one initializer, but what about second initializer? So you have a required initializer, which will never, ever be called. So you can put anything in there. It doesn't matter, but it is required to have it. Then uh, you have a function which is animate one frame, the most reasonable part of the API, perhaps. Uh, you get this call every time you need a new frame. You can update your state, and you can draw things on the screen here. And finally, you have some things to show a configuration sheet, which we'll get back to later on. Of course, what I really wanted to do is have all of this working in Kotlin, not just Swift. So I created a new project with Gradle. I added the native macOS targets. And I've set this up so that it produces an XC framework that I can consume with a macOS application. Uh, you can consume this very similarly as the like iOS KMP use case. If you've seen that before, this is going to be super familiar. The way to consume this with an Xcode project is to add this build step, call into Gradle. It will produce a framework, and you'll be able to call into that from your Swift code. So this is the overall s setup that I ended up with. I have a screensaver view, which is really like just like a 15-line Swift file, uh, because I couldn't figure out how to move the entry point into Kotlin as well. Uh, but that's really just the entry point. It forwards all of its calls into my Kotlin code. And that's where I have like hundreds of lines of actual implementation in that Gradle project. So uh, I want to put logos on the screen and move them around. First thing I need to do is load these images from somewhere. Luckily, we can use the asset system uh, in an Xcode project for this. You can drop a bunch of images in there, and then you'll be able to load them at runtime. Again, if you've seen iOS development before, perhaps this is going to be super familiar. It's the same thing. The way that you would do this in Swift uh, to access these uh, images is you would need to create a bundle which, with this like pretty special syntax of bundle for type of self, which gives you the appropriate bundle for the current class instance. Uh, and while you can't quite do that in Kotlin, you can import the bundle type. And with a slightly different NSBundle function, you can get access to the same bundle. 
Then to get an image out of the bundle in Swift, you would do image for resource, and then it's a stringly typed API for some reason, so you need to pass in just the name of the image as a string. And you can do the same thing in Kotlin, uh, almost exactly the same thing. It's an image for resource extension function. You pass in the string, and it will load you the same NS image. Uh, all, of these, all of these imports are just available for you by default when you're targeting macOS with Kotlin native. Uh, then uh, you need to put this on the screen somehow. For this, we can use AppKit, which is the built-in built UI framework on macOS. We can create an MS image view by just calling its constructor. We can do a bunch of initialization on it with apply. And once we have that, we just add it as a sub-view of the screensaver that we implemented, and that will show it on the screen. The things we need to set up here are like two uh, crucial things. One of them is setting the image, which we loaded on the previous slide, and then you also get to determine exactly where this goes on the screen just by specifying coordinates, so you have an x, y position, width and height, and that's exactly where your image will be shown on the screen. And then to move it around the screen, it's actually quite easy as well. You can just create new rectangles with updated coordinates, set that on the image view, and it will move itself to a new position, which basically gives you a way to animate. From here, you can imagine that you add in a couple for loops and do some math and bound, check it, bound checking for uh, bouncing on the edges of the screen. And you can essentially build your screensaver, and that gives you a dot .saver file as an output. Then you can go ahead and open that, which will automatically install it. And depending on how macOS is feeling, you only need to confirm this like two to four times. Uh, and that will install the screensaver or replace an existing one if you already had it installed. And this replacing an existing one is where the problems like really start escalating, because very often I didn't see the updated version of my screensaver. So during development, as I was trying to iterate, I kept seeing my old code running, and it was very confusing because I didn't know if the code change didn't do anything or if I wasn't running the new version yet. So I eventually developed like a seven-step process of how to invalidate everything properly so that I do see the new screensaver. And we're not going to go through this, uh, but I want to highlight one of them, which is that Sometimes you just need to go into Activity Monitor, look for everything that's called Legacy Screensaver, and force quit it. Like This is one of the many steps. But with that, if you get through all of that, you can basically put a logo on the screen, and it can bounce around, and we have our original implementation. But of course, I didn't want to stop there, so I wanted to add some more features at this point. Uh, I was quite happy that I'm able to develop a screensaver, so like, let's keep going. Uh, I wanted to add customization for the size, the number of logos, the speed of it, and I also wanted to have different logo sets. So this classic Kotlin logos through the ages is, is the standard, but I also wanted to put Kodi up there, for example. So let's see what we need for this. Uh, well, there's a bunch of UI work to like, put those settings on the screen, but you also need to store these preferences somewhere. And Again, if you've used iOS before, there's something called NS user defaults there, and it's actually the same key value storage API on macOS that you can use. Um, so you can just instantiate this by calling its constructors, as, and it's a simple key value store. And because we are writing Kotlin, we can use all of the cool Kotlin features. For example, I can wrap this into a delegate class so that I don't need to work with its APIs directly. And I ended up with a preferences object like this, where every property that it has is actually preserved in user defaults under the hood. So it's persistent, and it's like really easy to use uh, for storage. You can also sign up for uh, notifications so that you can observe changes in user defaults. Again, all of these imports are just like working by default. All of this is exposed to you when you're building for macOS native. And you can even do things like uh, pass in lambdas as the callback that should be invoked. So it plays really nicely with Kotlin. Then I found out that there's actually a dedicated class you're supposed to use for storage with screensavers, which is called screensaver defaults. So I moved over to this. Uh, luckily, it has a similar API. And then I quickly found out that this class just doesn't work. And then you try to save values, and you'll never get those values back after you restart your screensaver. I don't know what's up with it. It just like straight up doesn't work. So we went back to user defaults. But with this. I could now have a lot of codies on all of my screens uh, thanks to these customization options. So then I wanted to do one more thing, uh, which was that so far all of these images were packaged into the assets of the screensaver. So if you wanted to customize it, you would have to clone the project, you would have to modify its code, all of those hard-coded strings that are used to access uh, the images. And I wanted to make it more convenient to customize um, all of this 
uh, as a user without having to rebuild from scratch. So I wanted to have a browse functionality where you can just point the screensaver to a folder, have your images in there, and it would just load it and display it, uh, again, with this like bouncing um, style that we have implemented. Uh, to do this, uh, we're not going to go through the detailed APIs, but all of this is really easy, actually, with macOS APIs, because all of, like, obviously a desktop OS has really good APIs for browsing a file and then listing those files and so on. And what I want to highlight here is really just that it works so nicely with Kotlin. Again, you can use things like apply. You can use callbacks with lambdas in Kotlin. And you can also use things like default, uh, sorry, uh, named parameters. Uh, so there are a lot of APIs when you're using native things where you just pass in a lot of null values over and over again. And name parameters make it much more easy to read um, all of these things so that you know what exactly you're skipping on the parameter list. And again, all of the imports for all of these like file management things are just available by default as well. So with that, I was able to now uh, load images dynamically from a folder and put them on the screen. And that's pretty much the screensaver setup that I still use. And then, once I was done with all of this, uh, Apple introduced macOS Sonoma, uh, which, is, which is where the real trouble began. Uh, so two things happened here. They added their own really cool screensavers uh, with these like city flyovers. So that's bad if you're making a custom screensaver, because everyone will use the built-in ones. But also, I started seeing that my screensaver is suddenly consuming like 100% CPU and a couple hundred megs of RAM, and that didn't seem normal. So I went to investigate, and here's what I found out. Let's say that you're sitting on the desktop, you let it go to the screensaver. The system spawns a legacy screensaver process for you, as we've already seen earlier. Uh, this is called legacy because Apple's new screensavers use a new screensaver API, which is not available for you as a developer. Uh, and then it spawns your screensaver view in there, which is how the content is, is put on the screen. All good so far. And then you go to uh, dismiss this and back to your desktop, and what you observe is that the process is actually still around. It's consuming both CPU and memory. It's like ticking away in the background without being visible on the screen. But it does get worse, because the next time you go to your screensaver, it reuses the process, it doesn't reuse the view, it adds another one. So as you go along your day or weeks, depending on how often you reboot your machine, you'll keep collecting screensaver views into this process using more and more resources. If you're lucky, this eventually crashes and resets. But other than that, you, are, you just have this running the entire day, and it just consumes all of your resources. And obviously, I can't ship a screensaver like this to people. I can't recommend that you run this on your machine. So I needed a workaround. Uh, but first, I wanted to confirm uh, like what exactly the problem is. Is it my weird setup where I have a Kotlin framework, where I'm not writing it in Objective-C and so on? Did I just write like really bad code? That's always a possibility. But luckily, the internet confirmed that it's not a me problem. Uh, basically, they also had screensavers that were using like 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, since the early betas of Sonoma, because Apple just broke a lot of screensaver APIs for some reason. So then we need to work around it, right? Uh, I start looking for possible callbacks, possible APIs that I could use. I found this stop animation callback, which was really promising. It says that it's called when you need to stop animating. So I figured maybe I can do some cleanup here, maybe like remove the logos, stop my loops, something like that. This function is never called. So then you keep digging, you keep digging, and you go into the depths of Stack Overflow, and you find a post from 2009, uh, where someone suggests that there are a couple events that you can sign up for within screensavers. And two of these look promising. Uh, there's a will stop and did stop. Those sound like they could help you. And one of them works, and one of them doesn't. So it's basically a coin toss between them. But if you just test it, you'll find out that will stop is actually called when the screensaver is dismissed, and you can do some kind of shutdown there. Eventually, I was just removing my own view from the super view. So the process would still be running all day, but there wouldn't be a view inside it, so it would consume like basically no resources. This was pretty OK. Then I also found out that you can just terminate the entire process forcibly whenever the screensaver is dismissed. And the system will just recreate it anyway when you need to show the screensaver again. In fact, this is what it used to do before Sonoma. In summary, uh, I would not recommend that you try to build your own macOS screensaver, in case that wasn't clear. Uh, but don't be afraid if you ever need to touch interop with Kotlin Native. It's a pretty 
decent time, whether it's macOS or iOS, if you need these system APIs, they are there. You can call into them from Kotlin code. All of your Kotlin features work on top of these APIs. You, uh, you even get name parameters, as I mentioned, which you don't get with Java interop, by the way. So this is actually slightly better uh, in that regard. Uh, and of course, I do want you to put some Kotlin logos on your machine as a screensaver. So I'll give you a link to this in just a minute. But I know what you're thinking. Marton, you give like a lot of like Compose talks and things like that. Why are you possibly building with AppKit here? Why isn't this in Compose multi-platform? And well, it's a long story, but I eventually did get that to work as well. So if you go to the repo, which I'll link here, it actually has two different implementations now and the switcher in settings where you can hop between AppKit mode and Compose mode, as well as a demo mode, which just skips back and forth between them like every 10 seconds or so. So, with the Compose setup, maybe, maybe you should try building some cool screensavers. Because if you grab the template project that I have, you basically just get a Compose function, and you can put any Compose code in there, including things like Material UI, if you really want. Uh, and it will just work, and you can ignore everything outside of it that has to do with actually packaging the screensaver and setting it up. You can focus on just one Compose function and fill the screen with that. Uh, with that, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Please grab the screensaver from there. Please rate the talk in the app, and then go to the App Store and rate the app itself, because I would also love that. Uh, thank you.